Welcome to another video on biology and the topic that we are doing is ecology. This is Preetinder Kaur for Perfect Scores and the concept that we will discuss in this video is that of trophic levels. Now trophic level refers to the position an individual occupies in the food chain. So the position of an individual of our organism in a food chain. Producers, they always occupy the first trophic level, while saprotrophs would generally occupy the ultimate or the last trophic level of a given food chain. So the different trophic levels in a community are as follows. You have trophic level 1, which is always taken by the producer. Then you have trophic level 2, Two, which is taken by a consumer and we call that consumer as the primary consumer. Then comes trophic level 3 which is again taken by a consumer so we call that as secondary consumer. And finally we have trophic level 4 which is taken by another consumer, usually a saprotroph, but we call it as tertiary consumer. Now the trophic level of an organism can be determined by counting the number of feeding relationships preceding it and adding one. For example, we don't know what is the trophic level of this particular consumer, but we know that before this there have been two relationships this one and this one. So you add 1 to that number. So 2 plus 1, that gives you the tropic level of the secondary consumer. So basically it's going to be the number of arrows, because arrows move like this, the number of arrows plus 1. And in food webs, a single organism can occupy more than one tropic levels. So what we are going to do now is we are going to construct a food web that is going to have up to 10 organisms and we will see how the different tropic levels are going to be there. So these are the 10, these are the animals that, uh, and animals and the plants. So a combination of all organisms that will be used in the food web. You have algae, you have water weed which will act as the primary, primary producers. Then you have the prawn, trout, carp, turtle, slug, pondfly, dragonfly, frog, kingfisher and snake. So the algae which is the primary producer that is taken by the prawn, the carp and the slug. And the water weed also would be taken by the prawn. So these green arrows show the first level. It will also be taken by the carp, also by the turtle by the slug, by the pond fly. So these green arrows, they show the relationship between the producer and the primary consumers. Now the blue colored arrows, they represent the relationship between the first degree consumer and the second degree consumer. So the prawn is taken by the trout, the carp is taken by the trout or the kingfisher, slug is taken by the turtle, pond fly is taken by the dragonfly and the frog. These two purple arrows, they show the relationship between a secondary consumer and a tertiary consumer. So this case and this case. And these last arrows where the frog is taken by the kingfisher and the snake show the relationship between a third degree consumer and a fourth degree consumer. So that is how the relationships are there in a food web. Now I hope you remember that we discussed about the trophic level being the number of arrows before it plus one. So the algae has nothing before it so that means it is at the first trophic level even the water weed. Now coming to the prawn, it has one arrow before it, so plus one, that means it's at the second level. Similarly, the carp is at the second level, the slug is at the second level, and the pond fly is also at the second level. 
coming to the trout it has two arrows before it if you look through any direction or route and we say that it's at the third level because it's a second level consumer it's a secondary consumer so it's at the third level and similarly the turtle is both at the second and the third it's second through the water weed and it is third if it intakes the slug which has actually eaten the water weed coming to the dragonfly it is at the third level similarly the kingfisher can be at three or four or five the frog can be at three or four and the snake can be at four or it can be at five depending on how the frog is eaten by the snake so this would be how a food web can be formed now the initial energy that is actually transferred through the different parts of the food chain is light energy so all green plants and some bacteria they are photoautotrophic that means that they use the light energy and convert it into chemical energy via photosynthesis this makes light the initial source of energy for almost all the different communities now some bacteria they are also known as chemoautotrophic because they derive their initial energy from chemical processes but most of the plants they are photoautotrophic so let us summarize the flow of energy that happens in a food chain shows the summary of energy flow in a food chain now as you can see only 10% of the energy is actually passed from one trophic level to another and because 90% of the energy is lost the number of trophic levels are limited because energy flow is reduced at high levels so the sun basically supplies 7,300,000 kilojoules of energy and producers they need 90,000 kilojoules of energy per meter square per year out of which 53,000 kilojoules are lost because of respiration so to the next trophic level they are only able to transfer 37,000 kilojoules out of which 22,000 kilojoules are again lost because of heat so the primary consumer it needs 15,000 kilojoules per meter square per year but 9,000 kilojoules are again lost due to transpiration and it is able to pass on only 6,000 kilojoules to the next level but out of these 6,000 kilojoules 4,500 kilojoules are lost due to heat so the secondary consumer gets only 1,500 kilojoules per meter square per year but out of these 1500, 1200 kilojoules are again lost due to respiration. So it is able to give only 300 kilojoules to the next level. But before it goes to the tertiary consumer, out of these 300 kilojoules, 210 kilojoules are again lost due to heat. And so only 90 kilojoules are sent forward to the tertiary consumer. Out of these 90 kilojoules, 60 kilojoules are lost due to respiration and thus only 30 kilojoules can be carried forward to the next level which is very very low so you can say that the total amount of heat lost is close to 26,740 kilojoules and the energy that is lost due to transpiration and respiration is 63,260 kilojoules so as you can see the energy levels they keep on depleting by 90% at every different level so that is why the energy transformation can never be called as 100% efficient. So they are just 10% efficient and about 90% of the energy is lost. And that is why we get different kinds of pyramids of energy. So that is what we will be doing in the next video. So that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching this one. Don't forget to visit us at perfect-scores.com to share and like us and to send us your valuable suggestions and feedback. So in the next topic and in the next video, we are going to discuss the different pyramids of energy. Thank you so much once again for watching this video.